This is a, obviously, as you guys can probably see immediately, this is a financial maths question. Um, but grade 12, so you guys must remember that not every single grade 12, I mean, not every financial maths question that you are going to get is necessarily going to be a grade 12 type of question. What I notice is that a lot of learners in grade 12, um, they only ever want to use the F or the P formula, the future value or the present form present value formula. But guys, this question, as we are going to see now, is not a grade 12 question. This is actually a grade 11 type of question. All right. They can definitely ask you something like this. So let's see how it goes. Seven marks. That's quite decent. Right. So here we've got someone, Babalwa. Never heard a name like that before. Babalwa um, has three sons. She would like to give each of them 60,000 rand at the end of the year in which they turn 18. Okay, so that's a lovely mom. I wish, I mean, geez, I would love to have gotten 60,000 rand when I turn 18. Um, she plans to invest a single lump sum into a fund on the 1st of January, 2015. Um, the fund is going to earn interest, blah, 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 blah. After that, it will earn interest like that and like that and like that. And then on the 1st of January, 2015, her sons will be eight years old, 11 years old and 14 years old. Calculate the value of the deposit. Now, I can I can imagine that a lot of you reading this, you are like, what? This looks terrible. But I can assure you that this is not actually that bad at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw us a timeline. So this is a grade 11 type stuff, okay? So we're going to draw a timeline. And I actually like to draw two timelines. <clears throat> Why? Because I'm cool like that. Um, when your teacher does one timeline, I'm, I'm way cooler, remember? So I do two. No, I'm just joking, guys. I just like to do uh, two timelines, okay? The one timeline is for all of the money, like the deposits and the withdrawals. And then the other timeline, I use that one just for the different interest rates. I don't like to put it all on one timeline because it just makes it look a little bit uh, messy or crammed. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just put all the different deposits and things like that. So let's see. Okay. So what this lady is going to do. So I want you to imagine that you are Babalwa. Okay. And you would like to invest money. So you are going to put money into an account. Now we don't know how much money you are going to put into the account in the very beginning. So let's just say that that will be X. We don't know how much money that's going to be. So we'll just say X. Okay. Then when each of her children turn 18 years old, she's going to take 60,000 Rand out so that she can give it to them. Does that make sense? So we need to try and understand when that will be. So this lady has three children. There's an eight year old, 11 year old, and a 14 year old. Who is going to reach 18 years old first? Well, the 14 year old, of course. How long will it take until the 14 year old becomes 18? Well, that would be um, four years. So in four years time, Babalwa is going to take 60,000 Rand out of her account so that she can give it to her first child. Then um, how, okay, so, so, so you've got to, you got to think about this carefully. Um, this would take seven years, right? For this kid to reach 18. So that would take seven years. So that would be at T7. She's going to give out another 60,000 Rand. Okay. And then how long is the youngest one going to take to reach 18? Well, that would take the youngest one 10 years. And so that would be the end of our question. So I'm just going to put a T10 over here. Um, actually, let me make my number line a little bit shorter. It doesn't need to be that long. So maybe we can just go up to there. And then the interest rate timeline, we can just do up to there. So at T10, she's going to give out her last 60,000 Rand. And that's it. That is how this question is set up. Now, what I like to go and do is I then go look at the interest rate. So it says that the fund will earn an interest rate of 7.9% compounded monthly for the first four years. Okay, so up to T4, the interest rate is going to be 7.9%, and that's monthly. 
All right. Then it changes to 10.5% compounded half yearly. So that's some of you might like to call that semi-annually. Okay. So that's going to be 10.5% uh, half yearly. And that's all the way up to T10. All right. So that's the difficult part, to be honest. So guys, the way that it works is the following. The way that I handle financial maths questions is the following for grade 11 specifically. So what I do is I, <clears throat> I look on the green timeline, the timeline that has all these different, these different amounts. And I start with the first one. Okay. I start with the first one and I, I completely ignore the other ones. I just ignore them. I'm only looking at the first one, which is X. And what I'm going to do with that X is I'm going to compound it all the way to the end, all the way till T10, okay? So what would that look like? Well, that would look like this. Uh, let me try and make this nice and easy for you guys. Um, I'm going to do something quickly. Some students like it if I do this. Um, I'm going to write this in a different color. Oh, that said half yearly. I'm hoping that by doing this question for you guys, you'll see that there is a nice technique that you can do for these questions. So I'm going to take X. Okay. So that first X and I'm going to go um, X and then I'm going to look at the interest rate. And I see that for the first four years, it's going to be compounded monthly. So I'm going to go one plus uh, 0.079. You can say 7.9% if you want, and that's compounded monthly, and that's going to be for four years. So that means I'm going to put a 48 up at the top here. Okay, let's scratch out the seven. It's getting in the way. Okay, so that's going to be uh, to the power of 48. Then all that I do is I then switch over to the next interest rate. Remember, I'm using the formula A equals to P1 plus I to the power of N. Um, so I could say a equals to that over here and then my interest rate changes. So, um, it just changes to 10.5%. Remember that what we learned in grade 11, when the interest rate changes, you just add another bracket. You don't have to, you don't have to like go recalculate everything. You just add another bracket and that one's going to be for six years. So that's going to be six multiplied by two, which is 12. Okay. So there we go. That is the X complete. So I've now finished this one. So I put a little tick there for myself. That one is finished. Now I'm going to move on to the next one, which is, um, let me get rid of all of these things here, there, there, and there. So what I now do, guys, is I'm now going to be focusing my attention on this 60,000. Okay. Now that one says that it's got a minus. So I'm going to say minus. 60,000. Sorry, I can't fit everything on one line, but yep, it's just the way it is. Um, so minus 60,000. I then look at the interest rate. So remember that this T4 starts over here. And I always look towards the end of my timeline. So that only has the blue one. Can you see that that only has the blue interest rate? So I'm not going to put the red interest rate. It's only the blue one. Like that. And that one is going to be for uh, six years. So six times two. Oops, it's not a 12. Sorry, 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 sorry. Hope no one saw that. Um, so it's a two at the bottom there. And that's going to be for six years. So that's going to be six times two, which is 12. Excellent. Um, and that one is now complete. I've now done that one. There's nothing else that needs to be done there. So I can tick this one off. Then I move on to my next one, which is the next 60,000 Rand. Um, and so then, then I'm just going to say, um, let's write this T10 over here. I don't want you guys to be confused over there, T10. So now I'm going to carry on. So I'm going to say uh, minus another 60,000 Rand. And this one also only has the blue interest rate because um, it starts over here. So it's only got three years left. So I'm going to use the blue interest rate for that one as well. Whoopsie. 1 plus 0 0.105 over 2. And that's just going to be 3 years. So that's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So now that one is complete. So I can tick that one off. And then at the very end, um, this one happens right at the end. So for this one, I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to say uh, minus 60,000. 
There is no interest for that one. Now, here's the big question. How much money must Babawa have at the very end? Well, think about this, guys. She's busy. She, she, she put money in um, for all of her children. And when the last child, the eight-year-old, when that child reaches 18, she's going to give that child 60,000 rand. And then what we would assume is that Babawa won't have any money left in that account because that account was only opened in order to uh, help her kids when they turn 18. She doesn't want money left over. So this um, final amount after she's given away all of the 60,000 rands should be equal to zero, okay? And so what I'm going to now do, guys, just so that I can make some more space for you guys, is I am going to, um, <clears throat> actually, I can write it all at the bottom here. So I'm going to write this out for us once more so we can just see what it looks like properly. So I'm just rewriting it now, guys, in one line so it's easier for us to um, calculate. And then minus 60,000 here. And then all of that is equal to zero. Okay, now, guys, now I'm not going to waste all of our time showing you how to calculate this now. All that you are going to do is the following. You are going to take all of these values over here. And you're going to take all of that to the right-hand side of the equation where the zero is, okay? You're going to take all of those values to the right-hand side. And then once you've got that amount on the right-hand side and you've added all of that together, then you're going to divide by this part over here so that you will be able to get the X value by itself. Okay, I'm not going to spend time on that. That is easy for most of you. But your final answer that you would like to reach um, should be 99,699 rand and 20 cents. So that is the amount that Babalwa must put into the account right now so that she can fund all of her kids at the appropriate time.